Good morning students. My name is M. Sasikala, Assistant Professor, Department of English, KCS Kasi Nodar College of Arts and Science. In this video, I am going to explain Seven Little Australians novel written by Ethel Mary Turner. In this, in this video, I am going to explain from Chapter 11 to Chapter 22. Chapter 11 Ponty goes to Meg's room and tells about Judy's arrival. Meg goes down with Bonty to see Judy. She sees her father. Captain tells her that he is going out and will return next day. He asks Meg to take care of the children. They meet Pip and Nell and join with them. All four of them meet Judy. Judy asks for food to eat. Pip goes to kitchen, comes with bread, butter, chicken and wine. He feeds his little sister. Then Judy narrates her adventures. Due to missiles, the school send children to their home. Judy goes with Marion, her school friend, to Katumba. Later, she changed her mind and returned to Miss Rule. Meg tells her that it is not possible to stay here for a week without her father's knowledge. But Judy refuses to inform to her father. Chapter 12 on the fourth day of Judy's residence in the loft, Martha discusses about the children's strange behavior with the fellow servant Bridget. Children transfer wash basin, a chair, carpet, teapot, cups, plates and spirit lamp from their room to Judy's place. Every day they used to meet her and talk with her. Judy still looks pale and often coughs. One day they have gone for picnic with Judy to the riverside. Bonte has come home to bring something for their picnic. Her father notices Bonte's unusual behavior. He inquires him. Bonte tells everything to his father. Chapter 13 Captain couldn't believe Bonte's words. He first goes and examines the shed. He calls Esther and asks her to come with him to Riverside where their children have gone for picnic. Bonte is locked in his room. This puzzles to Esther. But she doesn't ask anything. As they are approaching, one member from the group runs and hides behind the thick bush. When Captain asks about this, they didn't give proper answer to him. Esther asks Billy T. Pip replies that they are waiting for Bonte, who has gone to bring Billy. Captain tells them that Bonte is not well and stays at home. Finally, all of them reach home. Except the general, Captain asks other children to meet him in his room. When children gather in his room, he asks them to wait for a few minutes and goes out. He goes to the place where Judy stays. He opens the door and sees Judy. She is sleeping well. He calls her. He inquires about her travel and school. He asks her to come with him to go to school now. Judy starts coughing with blood. This strange scene makes Captain dumb. Chapter 14 After the incident, Judy is not forced by her father to go to school. She has soft bed and delicious food with loving voice around her. The doctor tells her to take complete rest. Her brothers and sisters entertain and engage her. Meg gives lot of gifts to her and Pip has made something to please her. Meg finally disconnect herself with Altith. Esther tells Judy that hereafter she need not go to boarding school. This news gives great energy to Judy. She recovers soon. Doctor suggests to send Judy somewhere away from sea which will make her to recover soon. Captain thinks to send her to some hill station but he drops the idea. Esther receives a letter from her father. He invites his daughter, General and others to Yerahapini. Captain grants permission to all to go to Yerahapini. He thinks that it will improve Judy's health condition. Chapter 15 The scene is now shifted to train compartment. The whole compartment is occupied by the family except one seat. The captain and Pat are standing on the platform. The bell clings. The train moves. All the children are happy to travel in train. But later, their spirit has gone. They become very tired. Finally, they reach their destination. Esther's father is waiting outside. He welcomes everyone. Buggies are waiting outside of the station for them. On the way, 
Mr. Hussle distributes biscuits and sandwiches to all children. Finally, they reach the house. All the members of the house call Esther my little girl. Mrs. Hussle invites them all. Within 10 minutes, tasty food is served to all children. Baby is scared of the new atmosphere. She pours coffee all over herself and bursts into tears. Meg consoles her. Then all children go to bed for their deep sleep due to their time. Chapter 16 Yarahapini is very hot. The house surrounds with lots of beautiful trees and flowers. Mr. Hussle is always in saddle and works very hard from morning to evening. A big stone cottage is right in front of the little old place. All the six children are exploring the buildings. They call Esther's mother, little grandma. Children want to go to the building, which is locked. Mrs. Hussle tells them to go and get the keys from Mr. Gillette. Make and Judy go and ask the keys. The room is full of literature books. They get keys from Mr. Gillette. Mrs. Hussle opens the padlock of the storeroom. There are plenty of heatables in the storeroom. Mrs. Hussle gives lot of fix and dates to Bunty. They have lot of men to work in their field. Then the children have horse ride which belongs to Mr. Hussle. Chapter 17 One month has gone. Pip could not sleep peacefully. He is thinking about the cattle drafting which is going to be visited tomorrow. Mr. Hussle has given him a little gun for hunting birds and rabbits. He is accompanied by Tetawonka. Next day at 5.30, he has finished his breakfast and goes along with Mr. Hussle for cattle drafting. Mr. Gillette gives a short whip to Pip. Pip learns from Mr. Gillette about the logic of divisions of cattle. Mr. Hussle has assigned the work to his workers. The cattle drafting is continued on the next day as well. Chapter 18 Esther has gone to a ball along with her father few miles away from Yarahapini. The picnic has been arranged for the children. The first place is away from 14 miles. It is too difficult to go in buggies. Cranky Batu is the picnic spot. Mr. Hassel has given in charge for children to four men. He also instructs them to pick up a couple of men from distant huts to help in the task. Tusk. Tetawonga has also accompanied them. Children promise Mrs. Hussle to behave obediently. The packing of food is over. Mr. Gillard takes few books and a lot of English papers to read during his journey. The bullocks start with great spirit. There is a bark hut where the children stay for a few hours. They started eating roasted fowl and duck which was packed by Mrs. Hussle. There is the apple tot and apricot to eat. Mr. But Mr. Gillette has brought materials for a damper. He prepares something for himself and shares it with children. Chapter 19 Once Mr. Gillette told Meg that she looks like his little sister who is dead. On the same day, he took her blue ribbon which fell from her hair and tied in his hand. He even asked her to allow him to keep this blue ribbon with him. On the sixth day of the picnic, children finish their lunch in the hut. Judy takes General and goes over to the belt of trees. Pip and Bonty are catching locust. Baby and Nell gather wild flowers. Meg collects the untouched food. Mr. Gillette tries to help her, but she refuses. He returns her blue ribbon. She takes it and slips it into her pocket. He empties the billy slowly. Again he asks a ribbon. She gives him, but he doesn't take it. He wants to give advice to Mick. He advises her that she should never show any difference between her whiteness and their blackness. He further advises her to be gentle and forgiving. Her face becomes pale. He says to treat others as her brother Pip. She cries. Mr. Gillette says, I am more than twice your age, nearly to be your father. She returns her ribbon now. He takes and keeps it in his pocket book. Chapter 20 Judy is playing with General now. They play chasing. Suddenly, she bends down and collects the sticks. She totally forgets General. General moves far from her and thinks that she is chasing him. Here, the writer wants to stop writing, but she continues. There is a tree falling on General. Judy screams. She leaps across the ground and tries to save General. 
all or all are hearing the cry of judy and general judy falls on general to save him from the fallen tree mr gillet moves the tree slowly he saves them judy is now in hut she hurts badly mr gillet sends pep to bring doctor he moves to bring bucky he asks meg to take care of her when meg asks him will she die while you are away he replies god knows chapter 21 judy is dying she is very quiet now meg is sitting beside meg is sitting beside her baby is sleeping bonty is standing with grave look judy tells meg that she is afraid of death she asks meg to say some hymns meg started telling hymns judy looks quiet she shut her eyes she doesn't want to see anything meg's arms are around her nell is holding judy's hands baby is holding her feet now bunty's lips are on her hair pip enters and falls down beside judy he calls judy 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 opens her eyes and kisses him she gives him both her hands and her lost smile she dies finally chapter 22 they go home again now it is only six children judy left them all on the hill top now the place looks like a tiny church hall now they are in misrule meg and nelly go to church the first sunday after their return she sees aldit and graham in the church alan looks at her from his pew he clasps her hand when church is over he tells her to be friends forever meg accepts his words gradually pip comes to normal but his smile disappears whenever he thinks of judy bonty now nowadays never lies baby is also growing well the captain never smoked at the end of the side veranda now because the lawn makes him to see a little judy in a pink frock who was mowing the grass in a blaze of sunlight judy's death made his six children dearer to his heart now but he never shows his affection openly the general grows chubbier and adorable his life is judy's gift now the author tells us that her pen has been moving heavily she said it is too difficult for her to write lost two chapter she wants to stop to write this novel she doesn't want us to feel sad she further says that she wants to tell us of her young australians again after few years finally she said goodbye to all thank you children thank you students thank you for listening and thank you for watching